a video from Meghan Markle S. 2021 interview with Oprah Winfrey has gone viral again, showing her discussing the lack of support she received from the royal family concerning her mental health. In the interview, Meghan detailed how her pleas for help were rejected by Buckingham Palace, even as negative media coverage impacted her. She also described being silenced by the institution. Specifically, Megan mentioned being denied mental health support during her pregnancy because she was not a paid employee of the royal family. The video has garnered nearly 450,000 views and over 8,700 likes on TikTok. The reference to not being a paid employee confirms the original report she approached Human Resources for assistance. Why? Other members of the family had received counseling. Charles himself, William, and oh yes, her husband. There is simply no way she would have been denied help had she actually asked. Returning to the matter of the husband, he said he was too embarrassed at the situation to do anything and didn't know who to call. Firstly, he had just been involved in setting up heads together, one of the fundamentals of which is Don T. B. embarrassed. Secondly, he didn't know who to call. Well, there was the aforementioned Heads Together group, or her obstetrician, or one of the doctors used by the royal family, or one of Henry S. Godparents, was a psychotherapist, or failing any of those. There's a thing called a telephone directory. Look under Harley Street. It is worth noting, if she was truly in the state, she describes, she made the fastest recovery on record, and that without treatment. Perhaps she could tell people in a similar condition, how she managed it. That is also considered something more useful to society than being a useless and cruel person. Harry received one, five million a year, for being a working royal. They had their exorbitant expenses, endless staff, and rather grand accommodation at no cost. Their wedding cost 32 million. She worked for the royal family for 18 months. And now, if she was nicer, she has an earning potential that is far greater than any other middle-aged failed Hollywood actress. Harry would never have inherited the millions he has done if he hadn't been a working member of the royal family, but she considers she did it for free. She is truly the most self-centered person in history. Did nothing happen in the world today then? Isn't life in this world complicated enough? This is one of the best of Megan S. Ad lies trying to bring down the royal family, all because she wanted to change the monarchy and do things her way. Perish the thought. They would be all turkey teeth, Botox, plastic surgery, forgetting how to talk properly, and putting on little girl voices when talking. They would also have to learn to lie, find out where all the cameras are, and smile directly looking into the lenses. I think that I can honestly say that thank goodness she failed and that the late queen could see right through her false personality, it you can call it that. I don't know what Meghan really went through, or whether she had psychological problems, like she said. However, even if she has such an unstable mentality, she must also know the following issues. Perhaps Harry is not alert enough to enlighten Meghan. The British royal family is not a medical or psychological counseling organization. Their main function is to represent the stability and continuity of the state, carrying out political and social tasks. They are also symbols of tradition and history, not professionals trained to handle individual mental health issues. Therefore, Megan S. expectation that the royal family solve her psychological problems could be seen as a misunderstanding of their role and capabilities. While the royal family can provide a certain level of support and understanding, they are not equipped to provide the professional help needed for complex mental health issues. It is inappropriate to expect them to intervene professionally with issues such as depression or anxiety. Not only does this put unnecessary pressure on the royal family, but it can also cause misunderstandings and disappointment on both sides. The royal family also faces pressure to maintain privacy and confidentiality. When royals require mental health help, addressing the issue in public can further complicate the situation.
Megan S. public disclosure of her demands and frustrations may have created unnecessary tension and made it even more difficult to resolve the issues. With all the mental health doormat had received over the loss of Diana, why did she not ask him to put her in contact with someone? Why not find someone herself? So many different things she could have done, yet playing the victim yet again was far easier. Interesting timing, though. This is released when there is a mention of HRH, Princess Catherine hoping to maybe go to Wimbledon or to the Children's Sports Day. Meghan and Harry, too. Remember that status is not a free ticket to empathy before Meghan and Harry, as members of the royal family, had access to a global platform and an exceptional level of attention from the media and public. Their sharing of personal difficulties and challenges of royal life has attracted considerable sympathy, especially through interviews such as with Oprah Winfrey. However, it can be criticized that they have chosen to publicize these issues not only to seek understanding, but also to create a more favorable personal image in the eyes of the public, which can be considered is the use of their position for personal gain. They are using their former status to promote a critical view of the royal family, which could harm the image and stability that the royal family strives to protect. In short, Meghan Markle can be described as the embodiment of ingratitude, a pale image of a traitor. After being accepted by the British royal family and cherished step by step like a precious jewel, she turned her back on those who reached out to help her in difficult times. Not only that, she also used the favors and privileges she once enjoyed to criticize and attack the house that once opened its doors to her. The fact that she and Harry chose to leave their royal duties and responsibilities, only to later use the fame and popularity that the royal family brings for the purpose of building their personal brands is an act of unjustifiable. Not only did they betray those who supported and protected them, but they also demonstrated a basic lack of understanding of the meaning of loyalty and respect. This is not only ingratitude, but also clear betrayal, an act of betrayal no different from a dog biting the owner who has raised him well. My memory can be failing, but I seem to recall that when Harry's wife said she needed to go somewhere, she wanted to go to some particular place venue, which was why she was told she couldn't and that it wouldn't be good for the institution. But more than this, Harry's wife had chosen her own medical team when she was pregnant. Why wasn't she approaching them for help for her mental crisis while pregnant? Alternatively, why wasn't she approaching her mother, Doria Ragland, who had some training and presumably some contacts working at a mental health facility in Los Angeles? She said it like the listeners were children who didn't understand. The royal family was willing to spend 32 million pounds to organize a wedding for her and Harry. Perhaps they regretted a little money to treat her mental illness, who is free to follow her closely to see if she is okay, and then call the doctor. As an adult, do you know how to eat when you were hungry? When you were thirsty, do you know how to drink water? So why didn't she know how to go to the doctor and get treatment when she was sick? Does King Charles have to follow her every hour to see when she is sick and then take her to the hospital? Was she not well-educated? The royal family is ready to accept Meghan as their daughter-in-law. Are they defaming themselves with unworthy things? Doesn't she still have Harry? Instead of blaming the royal family for not caring, it's more accurate to say she should blame her husband. If your husband can to take care of you, don't he expect anyone else? If anyone is watching my video up to this point, I want to know if everyone agrees with my thoughts or not. If so, can everyone leave a yes comment? Returning to the issue, a source said she did all this for free. What the hell? Dante make me so angry that I vomit blood. Freeboard and lodging. The security provided as it was then. The one million claimed for clothes in the first year alone. Staff paid for by the firm. Lackeys to pop into Windsor to pick up coffees for her. And whoever presumably Frogmore Cottage was too small to accommodate a kettle. The list is endless. You know, 
I never believed a word of this, as she was pregnant at the time, and under the supervision of her doctors, all she had to say was, she needed help from them, and being an expectant mother would assuredly have been listened to, royal family or no royal family. Her OBGYN obstetrician gynecologist would have made sure she got the proper care. Once again, the victim card was played, and her performance for Oprah was right on the money, and she got the response she was hoping for. The royal family was vilified, and she knew all along that they would not be able to respond to her accusations. In fact, just one call, and Megan had read First Class Speedy Appointment but Megan had a speedy recovery. Plus it all sounded very much a copy of his mother's condition, with a slightly unstable condition herself. Diana had received support. Remember her throwing herself down the stairs. Sorry, but with MS attitude, she could have told Harry anything to believe everything. So this, nobody would help. Support business is another fantasy she had thought of against his family. Clearly, Meghan Markle appears as a figure surrounded by contradictions and complexities, as a middle-aged, seasoned, strong, and independent feminist. She declined any medical help offered by the palace, preferring instead her own doctor with whom she had established a good relationship. Yet curiously, she turned to the institution when experiencing suicidal feelings. This juxtaposition raises questions about where her trust lies particularly in matters as sensitive as prenatal care. Why, then, did she not consult her personal doctor as part of her prenatal regimen? Was she under medical care, or did she deem prenatal care unnecessary? Furthermore, it seems peculiar that she did not turn to her husband or her mother, a social worker, for support. Additionally, given her visibility and access to resources, why did she not contact an anonymous helpline herself, especially since she had previously discussed her struggles with low mood on her blog? Choosing to approach the in-laws a move that could be interpreted as setting up a paper trail for later grievances also adds a layer of intrigue. What became of those feelings? Did she ever seek and receive help? After essentially escaping a situation, she likened to Alcatraz. If not, why not ensure she obtained medical attention to prevent a recurrence, particularly with children in her care? Questions about prenatal depression arise, especially given her level of affluence, where loss of income was not a concern. Was the issue really about prenatal health, or was it something else? In discussing these points, urging caution and restraint might be wise, continuing to scrutinize her actions without considering the full breadth of her circumstances may not be doing her any favors. In fact, she and Harry were patrons of numerous mental health charities at the time, with leading mental health professionals on speed dial. What a contrast between the two women. Kate has cancer and is quietly battling with dignity and only thinking about protecting her children. The other publicly whinges and whines and plays the eternal victim for problems that she has brought on herself. Always the victim of the feel sorry for me, because the media made her feel bad. The royal s are always to blame in every scenario except her own husband, Prince Harry. Why was he not doing anything to help her in all these situations? Meghan would rather bash the royal institution and her new in-laws on national television. Seeing a doctor in regards to mental health is legally confidential, and you do not require anyone's permission to do so, including the royal family. The following is a sharing from a woman that Meghan should know. There are many other situations that are much more difficult. Dante rushed to speak up without knowing whether you said it well or not. It was stupid, of course. She can be stupid, but Dante involve others, especially the royal family. Specifically, the woman's story shared as follows. I have never believed this for two reasons. During pregnancy, my husband was in the military and away. My family was in another part of the country and no phone in 1966. I was very depressed crying all the time and struggling to get through the day. A lot of women have emotional ups and downs during pregnancy. We don't all rush off claiming mental illness. And second, 
Harry already had a counselor on speed dial, so he could have gotten her help if she really needed it. Much easier than you and I. Go here to see what the problem is. Megan S. mother is also very much at fault in this. She is not defaming the royal family, but is defaming her own mother. She was not by Megan S. side, and guided Megan on the necessary things a pregnant woman should know. Why are problems with pregnant women blamed on King Charles or the royal family? It's so childish and funny. Should you think again before doing evil to see if you are smart and brave enough to complete it? Obviously, cause and effect will come sooner or later. Do you believe in karma? I really believe it. Evidence is that Megan S. business is currently facing many difficulties as well as an economic crisis. Megan, thick-faced, turned to King Charles for economic assistance. Too brazen, shameless. It is ludicrous and hypocritical that Meghan Markle looks to be seeking assistance from the one person to whom she owes the greatest duty and appreciation, but the one person that she and Harry, and especially Harry, since Meghan entered his life, have messed up so badly. Meghan Markle would like King Charles III to give American Riviera Orchards his stamp of approval. She's going to ask King Charles for assistance after everything. After he walked her down the call aisle when she didn't have her own father present because she had a falling out with him as well. After he had done so much for her. After his crown had given her the popularity she now enjoys. She now wants to expand her business ventures away from the kingdom and the royal family. And she is asking for his assistance. What a cheeky move. Okay, it appears you can hear me. That's good. Have you pushed the like button? I don't know. I've even been doing YouTube for four years, and I am always told that helps the video get out to more people. More people see it on their, whatever it is called, what is it, homepage, and more people then click and join us and chat with us. So please hit that like button and all that stuff. In any case, Meghan Markle is hoping to gain royal clearance for her new lifestyle business. In March, the Duchess of Sussex, 42, teased the launch of her new business venture, American Riviera Orchard, via an Instagram post. We all saw it. We spoke about it, and she did it all in a really strange way on Instagram. It didn't work very well, and no one knows what s going on, and it has been months. That is really typical of Megan. She does not just release anything, and it is completed the following day, week, or month, it takes half a year or a year, and then very little output is actually present. So we'll see. Could this be the first time she has put out some business material or done something in her job that had a positive immediate impact? Because it never seems to happen, even when she has every advantage. Anyway, since those initial Instagram teasing photos, she has delivered jam jars and dog biscuits to her celebrity acquaintances. And she has even teased a forthcoming Ross wine collection, which I am hearing will be the first mass market product, her rose. But in a desperate attempt to boost sales, the suit's alum is seeking support from her estranged father-in-law, King Charles, despite not seeing him in years. You know, she arrives in England on her way to Nigeria. Doesn't he even leave the airport? Doesn't he even leave her extremely luxurious suite? to see Charles when he's sick, and yet she wants his help now. Megan is looking for assistance wherever she can get it, according to the insider, who has obtained this information exclusively for OK Magazine. Princess Eugenie and Princess Beatrice are at the top of her list, but she is aiming even higher and hopes to obtain King Charles' approval. Do you believe Charles will give his approval? Put a one if he will. A two if you do not believe King Charles will give that approval, regardless of whether he should or not. I just can't believe it. It's really ridiculous. According to this insider, Markle believes that her husband, Prince Harry, will contact the Windsor dynasty to help her with her new business projects. So, first and foremost, she prevents him from speaking with David Beckham, which gives him a great degree of embarrassment and shame which is something he has been suffering a lot lately. That causes quite a stir. Now he has to call all of the individuals he wrote nasty things about 
and beg for assistance with her business, which she is using very much under the Sussex name. I mean, you couldn't make it up, but you could. All you have to do is write a script about a truly evil guy who destroys a family. Anyway, the source has stated that she wants Harry to contact anyone in the family to whom he still has access, which is becoming increasingly limited. She continues to believe that there is far more support for them inside the royal family than is widely acknowledged, and she believes it would be unwise not to seek assistance. That is when you question if Megan is a psychopath. As we frequently suspected, I know H.G. Tudor does a lot of that kind of material, so it's an excellent spot to look into it. Is she narcissistic? Is she a narcissistic psychopath? I am not sure what it is, but that screams narcissist rather than psychopath to me. That screams to me, this is a person who is so obsessed with herself that no matter how much negative feedback she receives from the rest of the world, no matter how much she avoids people, no matter how much she is caught completely effing them over, she still believes, oh, well, it's all been blown out of proportion, they still love me, seems crazy. Despite the controversy, Megan believes they can muster some support and backing. Yikes, wild products from her brand are currently unavailable for purchase. Markle sent jars of strawberry jam to a select group of celebrities in April. Last month, Nacho Figueras shared a photo of a pot of raspberry jam from Markle's new lifestyle business, as well as a photograph of his dog sitting next to a glass jar of the doggy treats. However, according to sources, the first item offered to the public would be Markle's Ross Wine. According to individuals close to Markle, the brand S name is a lovely tribute to Santa Barbara, California, which has been termed the American Rivera for more than a century. I've they been there, and an old buddy of mine had one of these. What are they called? They were called something other than mopeds, and he drove me around on them, which was actually quite nice. What a lovely town, city, whatever it is. The location is also where she and Harry live with their two children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. Furthermore, a trademark application discloses that the business intends to sell tableware, drinkware, decanters, kitchen linens, and edible delicacies such as jellies, jams, marmalades, and spreads, all of which are typical of traditional wives. The trademark application is pending assessment and seeks clearance for cookbooks. It was rumored that the mother of two may be seeking to earn a massive seven-figure sum, or more than a million dollars, within the first year of establishing the company, as if she didn't have enough money. Quite remarkable. Please let me know if you have any points, comments, or questions. I can only sort of skim, because there are so many people here, but... As Linda T. says, what is her motivation? She just wants to use them again. It appears to be the case. And as I have stated, it's an impressive display of her narcissism. Of course, I mentioned yesterday about a similar incident that appears to have been a setup in which she was filming for another trad wife thing. Basically, she does everything as a traditional wife. That means a typical wife. It's a newly popular term to describe a current anti-feminist phenomenon in which the traditional wife is a modernized version of the old traditional wife who sits there and makes jams and such. I completely get that. Every woman wants to practice feminism in a unique way. And the whole point is that everyone has individual liberty and rights and they can do whatever they want. And it appears that she wants to be that kind of wife. I.L. Sayan have stated that she could have done it from the start. She could have simply joined the royal family, done her part, had a lovely time, and been a traditional wife. Nobody would have batted an eyelid, and she would have been incredibly beloved. However, she decided to split up the entire royal family first, causing a severe schism beyond anything we've seen since the English Civil War, which occurred a few centuries ago with a different King Charles and another King Charles afterward. Do all of that to try to be this sort of modern feminist, which she claims to be, and fail miserably because she's just not very good at anything, and it's very frustrating for us creators in particular. 
because there's this feeling that a lot of celebrities, not just Meghan Markle, have that, yeah, I'll just do a podcast and everything will be done for me. We must make everything else ourselves. They have all of the production. Everything is properly set up for them and they still can handle the burden when they have nothing else to do and are paid hundreds of millions of dollars. That's how bad these people are. And she can tea just again. I get pissed off about that as a podcaster. While a lot of people have businesses or small businesses or traditional wife businesses, and they were now going to have to face a lot of competition from Megan, who already has not just a leg up, she has about 70 million legs up. By virtue of being Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, despite doing no work for the royal family. And on top of that, even that is not enough. She now needs King Charles, whom she massively effed over, to provide some type of backup, so she can make even more money off the royal family's back, without having to do anything. I am absolutely mad. Unapologetically, I say, she's used to playing pretend. Why doesn't it? She just go back to acting. Isn't he that gone? Because if you display too much of your personality as an actor, I believe it will be difficult to maintain selling yourself as the character in the film. It gets extremely, incredibly difficult. Let's see. Ah, just skimming to see if there's anything additional. Lori Frederick says, all I can say is what? She is Delulu. I believe she must be, if she expects Charles to assist her sell her stuff. Remember that this is the one thing the queen is concerned about it? S a half in, half out type of royal. The royals who are present walk in and say, Oh, yeah, I'd like a piece of this pie. Let me get involved. Let me marry some of these princes, and so on. And as soon as they do, go and utilize the royal name to make loads and loads of money. That merely irritates everyone and makes them want to avoid interacting with or following the royal family. It's not good for the royals, mostly, I suppose all twos. I asked earlier if you thought Charles would help, and it appears that he will not. Calo Kale makes an excellent argument here. Jeremy Clarkson is a better feminist than Markle. Very good point. Well, that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching our video, and I want to know what you think about these issues. Please express your opinion in the comments below. Hope you will always be cheerful and happy. Don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.